Welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess, and today we're going to be talking about the Orangus biloba. So I'm going to do a species spotlight on this plant because I think it's so cool and wonderful. Um, so I'm going to go over a basic description of this plant, uh, where it grows, um, what is typically the general culture for this plant, and how I personally grow this plant. So let's dive right in. The Orangus biloba is a small epiphyte and it tends to grow in uh, kind of woody areas. If you look at the plant up close, the leaves have kind of this really interesting veining and spotting throughout the plant. And at the tip of the leaves, there's kind of these two um, lobes, that's why it's called a biloba, um, that kind of meet together to create kind of like this curved heart-ish shape. The flowers of the plant are pretty small and white but they tend to grow in a very long spike with lots of flowers. So it gives quite an impressive display. Um, for my particular plant, I got one spike this year with about eight to nine flowers. And the flowers opened up from the tip of the spike towards the base of the plant. And it opened consecutively. So the overall bloom display lasted about two to three weeks. And with all the flowers in bloom, it lasted about a day or two. These are nighttime fragrant flowers, so that's why it has kind of a white cast to it and a spur with a little bit of nectar at the bottom for moths to pollinate the plant. I didn't really smell the fragrance of this plant because I wasn't around it at night, but I heard that it is quite lovely and it kind of has maybe like a musky florally scent. The petals and spur of the plant have a little bit of a pinkish tinge at the ends and the spur itself has a pinkish hue. So it gives it quite an interesting look from just a plain white flower. The Orangus biloba grows um, in several areas throughout West Africa, from I think Senegal all the way to Cameroon. So because of that distribution, this plant is pretty adaptable and pretty easy to grow because it tolerates a wide range of temperatures and environmental conditions. In its native habitat, it can grow from sea level to 700 meters um, in elevation and um, it kind of grows in kind of like this woody undergrowth area, um, usually on like twigs or bare branches. So it really likes to be exposed to a lot of air movement and uh, it likes also a very fast wet dry cycle. As for culture, um, this plant is considered pretty much a intermediate to warm growing orchid. So the general culture for this plant is that it likes uh, more shady conditions. Um, not completely low light, but kind of more dappled light conditions. It also prefers to be mounted rather than potted um, so that it has a lot of air at its root system and um, a fast wet dry cycle. It prefers um, temperatures between 60 to 85 degrees um, Fahrenheit. It likes to have high humidity between 70 to 80 percent. Because this plant uh, doesn't have any storage systems and the roots like to be exposed to a lot of air movement, it can be easily dehydrated. So watering this plant often and letting it dry out quickly is the key to success. This plant doesn't have a specific dry rest uh, during the winter time, but it definitely likes to be drier um, when the temperatures are cooler. As for my conditions, I grow it outdoors in my humidity tent. It is on the second tier of the shelf, so it is pretty shady, um, but it definitely gets a lot of water that runs off from the plants above it, and it gets watered um, every day or every other day in that setup during the summertime. In the wintertime, it's probably gonna get watered about once a week or so, and there's enough ambient humidity so that it doesn't dry out. I currently water this plant with tap water and it got no fertilizer whatsoever in the past six months or so since I've had this plant. Um, because it's outside, it's a little bit hard for me to um, provide fertilizer for this plant, but I know that in the future I will have to come up with a system to deliver a little bit of nutrients um, for the syringas. This plant is potted up in a net pot with um, wine corks around it. And it definitely looks like it's been in this setup for quite some time and it's been successful. So I'm not gonna try to repot it or do anything to disturb the roots because orangas are tend to be really finicky about uh, root disturbance and it also likes a lot of air around its root system. So by keeping it this way, um, I think that's what it really likes and prefers. So that is a quick recap of the Orangus biloba. I think it is a great species to have if you're diving into Orangus. And overall, it's just really cool and unique even when it's not in bloom because I love the veining and little spots on these flowers. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Attainable Green, to follow along on my orchid journey. I hope you all are doing well and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.